Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today starts week one of the Owls Readathon. So stay tuned. So it is Wednesday, April 1st, which means the Owls Readathon has begun. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm actually already well into a book that I started the last couple of days uh, but haven't completed it and it's not part of my owls it's one of the many other books that I have uh, added to my ridiculous list of books that I have to read this month so I'm currently listening to the audiobook of The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson this is the third book in the Remnant Chronicles series it's so good. Gosh, I don't even know how to... All I can do is explain the first book. In the first book, uh, you have a princess who runs away from her the wedding that she's supposed to have. And her and her handmaiden, they make it to another city. And they want to like live like normal people and just not deal with any of that other stuff. She wants The princess wants to uh, marry for love whenever she does get married. And then she ends up with two men after her. One is the prince she was supposed to marry. The other is an assassin sent to kill her. But throughout the story, you don't know which one is which when she meets them. So you don't know if she likes the assassin and he's playing her or if she likes the king and uh, he's pretending to be something. He's obviously not. Well, they both are. It's really good. It's a lot of fun and that's just the first book because things just continue to like in the other books. Oh my goodness. And this last book is just wow. <laughs> Don't you love that description? Uh, my first book that I plan on reading for the owls. Let's see. I'm actually going to take it a little bit easy on myself because I've got a bunch of other stuff to do. So the first book is for Charms, Lumos Maxima, white cover. And I'm going to read Back to the Future, Volume 3. So I'm hoping to complete this today. Don't know if that's going to happen because here in just a little while I have to go to my old house and uh, pull weeds because we had to put it back on the market. Woohoo! Anyway, I also have a Sip Spy box here. I know like in my last vlog, which was my Spring and a reading a -thon vlog part two, um, I had another Sip Spy box and that was the Rainy Day Tea box. Uh, but today we have the, I think this is just the regular monthly box. Yes. So these are my April teas uh, made for Melanie. And I am so excited for my own teas because the boxes that come specifically for me, well, they've gotten really, really good at finding teas that I'm going to love. And I'm so excited to try them because I like the fruity teas and I like the sweet teas. And right off the bat, I see one that's called French Breakfast and that just sounds mm, yummy. Okay, I'm not going to try one of these teas right now. I'll probably wait until tomorrow um, but I'm excited to try them anyway you open it up you get this little thing teas made for you you take a quiz they make tea or select teas that fit your tastes and then they send them in a box it's $15 a month though I have a discount code down below for five dollars off so if you're interested click that link <sighs> now I must try to get in a little bit of reading while I have a chance before I have to go to the other house. So I think I may sit and try to read this for a little while. And I will just talk to you later. Good morning. So yesterday I did manage to complete a couple of things, which is really awesome. But first, the tea that I decided to go with today. Oh, I left the package in there. It was the French breakfast and oh my gosh it like it's a loose leaf tea and you open it up and it just smells like heaven oh it's so good 
It's uh, called French Breakfast by Fava Tea. It's black tea, cran raisins, pineapple bits, safflowers, candula petals, white corn flowers, and flavor. And it's a high caffeine tea. A blend of vanilla and black tea accompanied by pineapple and cherry to add flavorful sweetness and a burst of character. Enjoy plain or with cream and sweetener. And I t mentioned before that I wanted to try teas with cream because I've never done that before. And I tried this tea by itself. It was a super light um, tea and it smelled just like dessert. It smelled like heaven. But I, it was good. It was a very light flavor. Um, it only steeps for like three minutes. So I could have maybe gotten a stronger flavor if I let it steep longer. But uh, I tried it and it was good. But then I added like a tablespoon of sugar-free hazelnut creamer and oh, it's so good. Xander said it smelled like granola. I didn't quite get that. But um, he thought it smelled really, really good too. And He's currently drinking a cuppa as well with the hazelnut creamer in it. And it is so good. I love my Sip Spy box. Like the ones that are custom for me because, mmm, okay. Uh, so yesterday, I did manage to finish Who is Marty McFly, the third volume of the Back to the Future graphic novels. This one is about... These aren't retellings of Back to the Future. They're like adding on little bits um, to the story. And this is actually done by the people who wrote the Back to the Future movies. So they do it right. Anyway, with this particular one, it follows Marty with... Uh, he's having some seriously internal conflict because... Okay, back in 1986, 1985, back in 1985, um, <clears throat> Marty saw the Libyans shoot Doc Brown, and Marty escaped to 1955, I believe. And then later in that movie, he comes rushing back to that parking lot, and he can see Doc Brown getting shot, and Marty taking off and the other Marty taking off in the DeLorean and so he starts questioning is he the real Marty or is that other Marty that he could see the real Marty and uh this was this was interesting and then there's like this other scientist who uh, the government was trying to get to build a time machine and he kind of spent his life failing at doing so and then also, this one tells us kind of the backstory a little bit of Needles and like how him and Marty's conflict kind of came to be. I gave it five stars. It was a lot of fun. I love, 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 love this series. It's so much fun. And my battery's flashing, so let me go change that and I'll be right back. I am back. Sorry if there's an angle change. Okay, so as I said before, I actually completed a couple of things. So while I was out and doing, um, like pulling weeds at the other house and just doing other random stuff around this house, like playing Animal Crossing, um, and while I was laying in bed, meaning to go to sleep, but wanted to finish the book. I continued listening to The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson um, on my phone and that book was so good. Like, ugh, I, I ended up staying up probably until like, I don't know, maybe around 1 o'clock in the morning, 12, 30, 1 o'clock because I, I couldn't stop where I was. I had to finish it. And I give it, oh gosh, I'm between, do I give it four and a half, four and a half or five stars? I'm just going to go ahead and give it five stars because I loved it. It was, that series just kept getting better and better the longer I read. So I'm really looking forward to reading Dance of Thieves later this month. Today I 
started listening to the audiobook of a Phoenix First Must Burn um, anthology, uh, 16 Stories of Black Girl Magic, um, just because I, I needed another audiobook, and I had this on Hoopla. So I started reading it um, or listening to it in the car because I had to go to Xander's school and pick up his medicine because they've extended the time that he has to school at home. So they don't know exactly when they're going to be going back. If they're going to end up going back this school year right now, they're set to not come back until April 27th. But anyway, I started listening to the first story, which is When Life Hands You a Lemon Fruit Bomb. And I didn't finish this first story yet, uh, but the first story ends on page 29. I imagine I'm getting close to the end. The first one is a sci-fi queer alien invasion type, type story. So our main character of this story is a black queer girl and she, Earth has been invaded by these orcs and killed off many, many humans and she lives with her uncle. Her uncle is trying to help other people. She gets recruited to um, go to this orc planet to kind of stop them in their tracks so they needed fighters and doctors and translators and stuff and so she goes as a translator hoping to earn her family a, or her and her uncle a spot in the sanctum i guess this place of safety and that's all i really know about it uh, i'm not huge on this kind of sci-fi so meh, we'll see but also today, I would like to try to read volume four of Back to the Future. This one is Hard Time, and this one also is significantly thinner than um, three. Three was 134 pages, and this one is not numbered, but it is thinner. Anyway, if I can, I'd like to try to get this one done, but I do have a big video to edit so we'll see I'm not not entirely sure I'll get that done uh, but I'm, I'm happy that I've already gotten two things completed this month so only 19 more to go <sighs> okay oh and as I said before uh, the beauty of darkness didn't complete any of my owls but uh, this one completed Lumos Maximus a Phoenix First Must Burn is me working towards my history of magic, witch hunts, read a book featuring wizards or witches. And there's at least one story in here that has something to do with witches, so I'm counting this one. And then this volume four is for astronomy night classes. Read the majority of this book when it's night outside. So I won't be picking this up until it's dark out. Hopefully I can get my video done by then. Okay, I'm gonna go. I gotta get me some breakfast and I gotta get to work. So I will talk to you later. So it's been a couple of days, I think, since the last time I checked in. It is currently Saturday, April 4th, and I haven't completed anything since the last time I checked in with you. I was hoping to read uh, volume four of the Back to the Future graphic novel, but I haven't. I did continue listening to A Phoenix First Must Burn, and I'm currently on page 303 of this, so I'm getting close to the end. Um, there's some stories in here that I really didn't care for. There's some stories that I really, really enjoyed. Um, there's a couple of stories in here that it was just like, ugh when it was over because I wasn't ready for the story to end. I, want, I wanted, I could have read a full book of some of these stories. So, I, I am enjoying it. Most of the stories I've liked or really, really liked and not, you know, there's not been any that I'm like, oh, I hate this story, so that's good. And, 
yesterday I ended up spending the majority of my day uh, at Pet Boys in the waiting room. I had to go get my tires replaced which and uh, an alignment so that was fun and um, I brought my computer along and I was editing a video during that time. And then afterwards I went to the other house and was pulling weeds and then had to come home and fix dinner and yeah. So really the only thing I could do was listen to the audiobook. And then today I had to get up and before doing anything I had to pack like get my stuff for the post office and I had to go because there's um well somebody in our group chat they know a person who has a little girl that's 11 years old and I think that person just got laid off from their job and they were going to be trying to give them some books to read and I happen to have a, quite a few like little girl kind of books because the girl's 11 and um, so I p boxed up all of those books for her and had to take them to the library to get them shipped off so she has something to read during this time. So, there's a very loud motor running outside. Sounds like a motorcycle. But I kind of wanted to get on here and check in real quick before I did anything else because it's been a minute. So, <laughs> um, and I need to like fix my next tea as well. But while I was at the post office, I decided to check my post office box and I had a little envelope here. And this is from... Carolyn Niles so I'm going to open it up and see what I got so she sent me this letter I read it off camera but uh, it says hello and it's shaped like a leaf and I thought it was really cute and uh, she actually has a YouTube channel as well called Carolyn Life and uh, I'll have to go check out her Instagram and thank her there but she says that um she's also a fan of Disney and uh, Dean Coots and yeah it's very sweet and I'm definitely going to write you back thank you Caroline it always brightens my day when somebody sends me a, a letter or whatever and I just I think it's really really cool so thank you I don't know how much more I'm going to get read today. I'm hoping that I can finish listening to A Phoenix First Must Burn. I have to clean my library so I can maybe listen while I'm doing that. And I have to work out, which I won't be listening to it then because I'll be using my app for that. And I've got to go to the other house and pull weeds some more. Also, I have to get a video edited and uploaded, and it's a lot. It's a huge video. There's like three hours of footage, so that's going to take the majority of my day. So, yeah, I probably won't get a whole lot more red. But I will check in uh, probably later this evening let you know if I did manage to get anything done but also to try one of these teas I don't know which tea I'm gonna try next um, let's see this morning I might go ahead and try just beat it um, okay so let me go ahead and tell you about just beat it now because I'm probably gonna do that off camera um, while I'm having my breakfast and then I may try another one this evening that's like a caffeine free and I can do that on camera. Okay, so Just Beat It by David's Tea. This looks like this. It's a loose leaf tea. Fruity, sweet, and energizing. This one is low caffeine. Oh, it says apple, raisins, hibiscus blossoms, beetroot, elderberries, carrot, green mate, goji berries, aronia berries, blackberries, red currants, guarana seeds, raspberries, cornflower blossoms, and wild berry flavoring. Like I said, it's low caffeine. This refreshing fruit and veg blend has energizing mate. It's M-A-T. 
and then an E with a little asterisk above it. And it's packed full of invigorating ingredients that will get any party started. Hot or iced, it's pretty hard to beat. B-E-E-T. And there's a 20% off with code sips dash by dash david's tea so i will definitely try this out with my breakfast and then this evening i'll probably try the tulsi sweet rose okay that's it for now i need to get to doing stuff i'll talk to you later so it's nearly 10 o'clock at night. I did finish uh, Phoenix First Must Burn, edited by Patrice Caldwell today. And I give this 3.75 stars. It's really hard for an anthology to get four or five stars for me because there's always going to be a couple of stories in there that don't really click with me. Most of these stories, however, I really, really did enjoy. There were some stories that I didn't want to end. I wanted to read an entire book by them. Um, it's by, there's so many amazing authors. We have uh, Elizabeth Acevedo, Danielle Clayton, Justina Ireland, Samaya Dodd, Karen Strong, Ibby Zaboy, Danielle Page, and the list goes on. This was really well done and some of the stories, like I said, were really, really good. And I just, I didn't want them to end. But also, some of them were complete. It was like the perfect size story. I really enjoyed it. I gave it 3.75. And because I finished my audiobook, I wanted to have another one. Because I actually finished that earlier this morning before I ever went over and did any like pulling weeds and stuff so I wanted to have an audiobook to listen to while I was doing that and I had a few others that I had checked out from Hoopla and one of those was King and the Dragonflies by Kaysen Callender and I'm still working on that I think I'm getting pretty close to the end I think there's only maybe an hour left in the audiobook but I'm listening to it at um two speed so about half an hour and this is middle grade the text is written quite large so I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm let me see if where's my phone it's in the other room this is about oh and this is not part of my owls this is something I added on extra just because I had uh, extra hoopla uh, credits anyway this is about a boy who, well, a black boy that lives in Louisiana whose brother has just recently passed away, like unexpectedly, his older brother. And on the day of his brother's funeral, a dragonfly comes in and seems as though it looks right at him and then lands on the coffin. And King, our main character, he believes that that dragonfly is his brother. So... Every day he goes to this swamp area where the dragonflies are in abundance looking for that same dragonfly looking for his brother and he believes he sees his brother in his dreams and well this it's really about him moving on well, in that part of the story it's about him kind of moving on with life and accepting his new normal. And his parents also coming to terms with what happened. But there's also this other uh, side story where um, King is trying to figure out his sexuality. He There's a girl that he likes, or there's a girl that likes him, and she's his best friend. But he doesn't feel the same about her that he thinks she feels for him. And he thinks that he may be gay. And that's not an acceptable thing there. So this deals a lot with racism for one. Uh, racism is a big thing in this book as well as um, being in an area that's very homophobic and the cruelties of kids and the cruelties of some parents as well and so far it's really really good I'm really really enjoying it and it's 
it's so well told but like I said I'm I've still got about an hour left in the book so I might finish that tonight I don't know I'm like running around trying to get things packed up and ready for tomorrow because tomorrow I go to my mother's house and I'm gonna be spending the next week there so yeah I'm not prepared <laughs> Oh, and I tried that tea earlier, the Just Beat It, and it was a pretty, like, red tea, and it was fruity, and it was delicious. It was, like, it was nice and tart without being, like, sour. It was perfect. Loved it. And now I'm trying the Tulsi Sweet Rose by Organic India. It came in individual packs. We got four of these. It looks like this and this says stress relieving and magical which is perfect for a magical readathon and this is caffeine free which is why I've chosen it for tonight because well it's 10 o'clock <laughs> and this is supposed to be steeping for four minutes and it's now been six so this is a nice like honey brown amber color and it very very much smells like roses it's not bad I'm not a huge fan of the rose smell I guess I don't know I know a lot of people like like rose water um, refresher things for their skin I'm just like eh. I'm not a big floral person unless they're like I don't know more sweet smelling this is not bad though it's a very light taste I like it this says organic Krishana Tulsi organic Rama Tulsi organic Vana Tulsi organic chamomile organic rose organic lemon myrtle and organic stevia leaf it's caffeine free revered in india as the queen of herbs tulsi holy basil supports stress mood the immune system and detoxification this blend is soothing and stress relieving and there is a 20 percent off with code sips by 2020 so if you're interested in any of that also this week I've gotten two more boxes like limited edition boxes or specialty boxes or whatever from Sip Spy. So uh, the next two weeks of this magical readathon I'll be trying more teas. I'll bring one of the boxes with me. Uh, one of them's like immune boosting so <laughs> that'll be handy. But the only other tea left in this box I'll probably try in the morning before I head out because I'm going to have a lot of stuff going on in the morning before I get out of this house because I need to work out. I need to pack food that we're going to be taking down there. I need to actually pack us a lunch to eat on our way there and I got to pack books that I'm taking and my computer and the Nintendo Switch because we've got to bring Animal Crossing and I have to shower <laughs> I have to eat I hope I can get out of here at a reasonable time anyway I probably won't be filming any clip really um, I might film one that's like hey we're headed out or it may just be wait until I get there to film anything let you know what I managed to read um, or listen to in the car. I do have the audiobook on Hoopla of 10 by Gretchen McNeil. So this is what I plan on um, listening to in the car on the way down. 10 teens, three days, one killer. This completes, well, my notebook's over there. But whatever owls is the one where uh you have to read something that's on the like on the coast or by the sea or something like that 
So that's what I'm reading this one for. I have quite a stack of books I'm taking with me as well. Anyway, the tea that I will try tomorrow is this Miracle Tea. Uh, it's super caffeinated. Mor Morga Morniga Infusion. Green tea, lemon, and ginger. And it looks like this and we got four individual packs of this as well this says or it's a sachet uh super caffeinated okay moriga dried leaves green tea ginger root lemon pieces sweet fennel natural lemon flavor caffeine tea extract all organic uh, this Moringa Energy Infusion contains 155 milligrams of organic caffeine tea extract, making it the perfect coffee replacement, providing an energy boost without jitters or crash. And this also has a discount code of 20% off with code SIPSPY. So yes, I will try that in the morning, but I probably won't film any of that because it's going to be crazy. Okay. I've got to go because I still have a million things I need to do tonight. So I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning. It is Monday, April 6th, and I'm currently in Mobile, Alabama. I'm here at my mom's house. She recently broke her arm and had to have surgery. So we're kind of here trying to help her with things that she shouldn't be doing herself. But I uh, wanted to make things a little bit easier on her for a little while. So uh, while Xander has his spring break from school, we're going to be here and yeah, self-isolating at my mother's house. Anyway, uh, on our way down, actually, I didn't tell you my rating for king and the dragonflies i think i would give that 3.75 i really enjoyed it and i forgot to mention before that it does deal with physical child abuse so if that's a trigger for you be aware of that going in but it was a really good story and i think i pretty much told you everything else about it and uh yeah i do recommend it now on our way down i started a new audiobook i've actually planned this so that i would have a uh, certain audiobooks playing on the way down and on the way home that xander might be interested in and we listened to 10 by gretchen mcneil 10 teams three days one killer and this book really surprised me. I, a lot of times when I'm reading or listening to thrillers, I can kind of guess the whodunit or guess, you know, the twist or this or that. And that a lot of times will take away for me, um, especially when it comes to rating a book, it'll take away a little if I kind of see it coming or know what it is or whatever with this i was surprised repeatedly and there were times that i a gasp <laughs> driving along and, <gasps> and xander was completely enthralled in the book the entire time we finished it in one you know just the drive uh we were listening to it ranging from 1.75 to two point speed and the reveal I didn't see coming at all. And I just, I really enjoyed it. I liked how it kind of showed how it came to be and uh, how this person managed to do everything. And I ended up giving this five stars. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I was not expecting this to be a five star book. If anything, I was expecting like maybe a 3.5 and I was very happily surprised with this. I definitely recommend it. 
it, I mean, this 10 teens, three days, one killer pretty much says enough. There's this, th these 10 teens are invited to this house party on this secluded island and on a house that's even more secluded on this secluded island. And um, the host that apparently, had, you know, that they all think invited doesn't make it out to the party. She's going to be arriving the next day. And then to kind of kill time over the evening, they decide to try to watch a movie. And turns out all the DVD cases are empty, but they did find one DVD that says do not watch. And of course they watch it. And it kind of foreshadows what's coming their way. And uh, the next thing you know, teens start dying. And yeah, it's, it, was, it was good. It was intense. It was a lot of fun. I could actually see this playing out in my head as a movie. This would make a very good movie. I mean, I'm sure they already have, there already are movies that are similar to this out there, but I think this particular one would make an excellent movie. I love this story. So five stars for this. And I have my handy dandy notebook here so I can tell you what challenge that was. So this completed my Defense Against the Dark Arts, Grindelow's book set at the sea slash coast. And that means I've completed three owls. Yes, I've completed three owls and five books this week. So the first book I completed was not part of the owls. It was uh, The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. And I gave that five stars. Then I completed Back to the Future Volume 3, which was one of my charms. That was Lumos Mac or it was Charms, Lumos Maxima, White Cover. Did I say that was one of my charms? It was one of my owls. It was my owl for charms. There we go. Lumos Maxima White Cover. And I gave that one five stars. And then I completed my Owls for History of Magic, Witch Hunts, read a book featuring wizards or witches, and I listened to the audiobook of A Phoenix First Must Burn, and I gave that, I think it was 3.75. And then King and the Dragonflies, which was not one of my Owls, I gave 3.75. And then Defense Against the Dark Arts, five stars. So really not a bad reading week at all. And hopefully I can get significantly, well maybe not significantly, hopefully I can get a good bit more read this week. Though uh, I've got a lot of video editing and I'm behind on so I gotta get that done. Yeah. Anyway, I hope this vlog isn't too much of a mess. Uh, I was kind of sporadic about my vlogging. But hopefully I'll do better this coming up week and for the rest of April. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!